Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a little bit longer of a video this time because I had a lot of fun. <laughs> Not like I don't always have fun making cards, but anywho. Uh, Bibiana Cameron, who I have been uh, crafty friends with for quite some time now, released a collection with Spellbinders that just came out called uh, Bibby's Butterflies. This video is concentrating on just one of the die sets that was released. <laughs> there's several, there's some stamps. It's fabulous. I'll have links to the whole collection. You guys can check it out. But for my video today, I'm using the Butterfly Card Creator set. And I did a ton of die cutting. I just pulled out a whole bunch of scraps and die cut all the little elements. And then I just put all the pieces. I just have this little uh, muffin tin. It's a silicone, again, brain. It's a silicone muffin tin. Any muffin tin is going to work. But I keep this one specifically for crafting. <laughs> and it's great to kind of corral when you've got a ton of pieces. So I sat and die cut, like I said, a bunch of scraps and you know put them in my little muffin tin and then I sat and just started assembling them same as I do any sort of like mass production sort of a thing I do everything at once so I did all my die cutting at once and then I did all of this little assembling so just assembling the layers of the flowers and whatnot so this part didn't take really that long at all because I had everything sitting right in front of me I just had to pull them out and do what I want to do I ended up, re I didn't never realized how much, like I was just going with it. I was having fun with it, using up my scraps. And I, I had a lot. I, my original plan was only to create like maybe a couple cards with this set and then use some of the other sets. But yeah, I ended up making five cards using what I have here. So I went along and did all of my assembling. You could always leave it here. Because these are, you know, fabulous on their own. You can't see it in the video, but in real life, like there's, of course, all the like etch line and dot details and all that sort of a thing that the dies impress into all of these die cut pieces. So there's already texture there. But uh, you guys know I have a thing with splatter. So I put all of these pieces in my splat box and it was just dumb luck that I had enough space in my splat box. Like I die cut a ton. So put everything in my spot box and then I thought, you know what, this time I should pull out my little flower sack towel here and lay that out so I don't get splatter everywhere, everywhere. I don't mind a bit, but you know. So I've got it all in there. And my first, my first layer of splatter is just my Avery L white ink spray. I've shown this in a ton of videos. Love this stuff. It's just quick and easy. So I poured that out on the palette, swirled it around with my little fan brush and went to town. Like just started splattering all of these pieces. You could leave it here. Shimmer splatter would be really pretty too. Like I'm already thinking of like the next project. But anyway, did the white. And then um, I also added some colors. Just because. Why not? Go big or go home. So I pulled out a couple of my distress paints. I have squeeze lemonade distress paint and dusty concord distress paint. And that's pretty much all I ever use my distress paints for is for splattering because that's just what I like to do. And I really like the distress paints for splattering because most of them, it depends on the color. It'll depend on the amount of pigments in them and stuff for the consistency. But because these are so high in pigments, I can water them down a little bit and they don't go really um, bland or dull like uh, cheaper craft paints that sort of a thing so I did the squeeze lemonade splatter and then the dusty concord so I've got white splatter a bit of yellow splatter some purple splatter and these are all just you know textured and fabulous and fun so because I did all of this and there's like a ton of pieces I took my entire splat box and set it aside to let all of this dry and I gave it a good long while to dry splatter usually doesn't take that long but better to be safe than sorry so i set it aside to dry and then for all of the greenery that i die cut since i've only well i technically have more than one splat box but anyway because my splat box was in use i just laid out a piece of paper towel on my uh flower sack cloth and i used um 
I first used Rustic Wilderness Distress Spray Stain, and I just sprayed that from a kind of a higher, um, higher point, higher angle, like a couple feet away, to give you know that deeper color and texture. And then I also used Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide Spray, and sprayed that on again. Not going for a solid coverage, but I wanted that like splatter and texture. So that also made it easier because like all these little leaf die cuts, everything like trying to, you know, get splatter on each one. It was easier to just use sprays for that. So, and then I added the Avery L white spray and then same thing, set that aside very carefully <laughs> and let those dry. So then for my sentiments, I used the Spellbinders Simply Perfect, I think it's mix and match. Yeah, Simply Perfect mix and match sentiments. I can't even remember when I bought these, but I die cut these from, again, just a bunch of scraps of some dark purple cardstock. And then I die cut multiples of them so I could stack them together because I just, at this point, it's just what I have to do. When it comes to die cut words, I, they just, they need to be layered. It gives it dimension. So for those, I was using my craft tacky glue, but I have an extra bottle of craft tacky glue that I have a metal fine tip applicator on. You can see it here on the screen. And I will link to that always. I just ordered the little package of the metal tips and I just screwed it onto one of the bottles and it works great. So I use that when I need like detail, you know, application. So I did that. And then um, for these butterflies, I had splattered, these are the ones I splattered like the dark purple die cuts. I splattered them first, let them dry, and then I adhered them to the vellum butterflies that I had die cut. I do not like splattering on vellum. Well, I do. I like splattering on everything. But vellum is finicky, so finicky. I It takes forever for splatter to dry on vellum, like forever. I've, I just, I end up smearing it. So I just, I don't, I don't splatter on vellum. So I splattered those die cuts first. And then once they were dry, I adhered them to the solid pieces I die cut from the vellum and then adhered their little bodies. And the vellum I'm using is the Lawn Fawn pearlescent vellum that I have raved about in videos. It's back in stock, FYI. So I'll have a link to it. <laughs> Highly recommend. It's beautiful. And I'm going to use it more in this video for the big butterflies too. Love it. So I used it to back these butterflies and it's shimmery and beautiful and I love it. So after I did all that die cutting, for one of my cards, I'm going to create a butterfly shaped card. There may be an easier way to do this, but I don't do a lot of fancy like die cutting and fiddling. I've said this a million times in videos, you guys. I just, I don't have the brain power for it most of the time. But anyway, I, these butterfly dies in this set are huge. This is the big one. That's a full size eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock to give you an idea of how big these butterflies are. They create a five by seven size card. Love it. So that huge piece of card, the full size piece of cardstock, I scored it. I've adhered that big, the biggest butterfly wafer die into place with the top of the wings just slightly past that score line. And then I put my second die cut plate at the score line so that all that's being die cut is everything but right at the very top of the score line. And you could actually stop here and just trim off the left, like the piece in between the wings and then the piece around the butterfly. Um, I'm sure Bibiana might have a video coming for that. I saw that in one of the photos was a card that looked like with just a butterfly that folds down over the card base. And I thought that was kind of cool. Um, but for mine, I wanted the whole card to be a butterfly shape. So you technically could have cut through both layers rather than, you know, fiddle around like I'm doing. However, I don't like cutting more than one layer of cardstock at a time. It, especially with wafer thin dies, it just, I don't get as neat of a cut and the cardstock like pressing it, the layers pressing against each other, it just bugs me. So all I did was flip this around. I used that little triangle flap in the top to be able to line up the butterfly a second time in basically the exact same way. So it's in the right spot. It's just slightly past that fold. I put my uh, die cut plate again, right up against like right shy of the fold and then run it through. So to do this specific like shaped card, you do need a large die cut machine. This is the Spellbinders Platinum machine with the nine by 12 plates. I will show other cards though, that you can use just a regular size, your normal size die cut machine. 
But to do this specifically, you would need a bigger machine because it needs to be able to hold an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. So for this shaped card, after I'd run that through, I just use my scissors to trim out the little bits in the center. And now I've got a butterfly shaped card. And like I said, this is a five by seven size. So this will go in a five by seven envelope. It's fabulous. This die set is so much fun. So this is going to be card number one, shaped like a butterfly, five by seven size. So you got plenty of space to put all sorts of fun things on. So once I had finished die cutting that one, I am going to just use my Villainous Potion Distress Ink and a blending brush. And I'm just blending around the edges of this just to give it a bit of depth. I was thinking like, oh, you could use stencils on this. Like I was thinking of going like mixed media, like there's so many, so many options. But I kept it simple because I'm going to be adding like sh shimmery vellum and a bajillion die cuts. <laughs> so anyway, while I was doing the blending, I also did this to another butterfly that I'm going to use on the next card. So after I did the blending on the butterfly bodies or on the wings, I took a couple of the bodies and I just blended some black soot distress ink again, just to add that little bit of extra dimension. And then I was using post-it tape because this is like a smaller piece to hold. And when you're using like distress inks and that, fingerprints show up really, really easily. So I just did some quick blending and now I'm back to my butterfly shaped card. So I used the slightly smaller butterfly die and I die cut that pearlescent vellum from it. And again, it's just, it's so beautiful. So I adhered the vellum just down the center and then adhered the body. And then I'm going to start assembling flowers and leaves and all the fun things. This is not my forte. I've said this in other videos, like floral arrangements or arranging floral die cuts in a pleasing manner is just not my jam. I'm just, I don't know. I, I, it's just not, you know, some people can just arrange, you know, do a floral arrangement and it looks amazing. And I'm just like, you know, I can't do that. So anyway, I just stuck them wherever. <laughs> I think in the end, they all look just fine. It just, you know, stick them on, stick in a few leaves. That's also why I did the splatter because, you know, it gives it the texture and, you know, distracts the eye, that sort of a thing. So I adhered everything. I adhered my, one of the butterflies. I adhered one of my sentiments. I also die cut a lighter shade of cardstock with the slightly smaller butterfly. And I stamped it with a sentiment from Simon's XL Greetings 2 stamp set with uh, the Villainous Potion Distress Oxide Ink. And then adhered that to the inside of my card. So that's card number one, shaped like a butterfly. For my second card, I'm going to make just a five by seven card. So I cut down some white cardstock to seven inches by 10 inches. And this is Simon's heavyweight white cardstock. So after I trimmed it down, I'm going to score it at five inches. So that gives me my five by seven inch card base. And again, you're going to see just how big that butterfly, like the main butterfly wafer dies in the set is. <laughs> I knew they were big because Bibiana told me when... Um, she sent, had these sent to me, like how big they were. But I, even when you say like five by seven, it's funny how when you actually get it and it's like, wow. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I have my card base. I just use some painter's tape to mask off about like a quarter of an inch. And then I'm just using another blending brush and some squeezed lemonade distress oxide ink to add just a nice layer of like soft yellow. So it gives it that little extra something without adding any more bulk because I'm going to be adding, again, a million die cuts. So after I was done blending this, I carefully removed the painter's tape by just kind of peeling it back on itself. Um, this painter's tape, even though it's, you know, supposed to be for special surfaces and all that stuff, if you remove it too quickly or if you pull like straight up or anything like that, you can easily tear cardstock. Trust me, ask me how I know. So pulling it back on itself and just going slow usually will save you there. So I did that and then I also stamped the inside with another sentiment from that XL Greetings 2 set with Villainous Potion Distress Oxide Ink. And then the butterfly, I did basically the same thing as the butterfly shaped card. Like I'd hear the pearlescent vellum die cut and then the body, bunch of flowers and leaves and everything and another sentiment. 
And then I'm going to adhere that to my card base and that completes card number two. So then for card number three, I used the slightly smaller butterfly die. Die cut that from some lighter cardstock and I'm adhering it to an, a an A2 size card. So a four and a quarter by five and a half. So I adhered that on an angle and then I can just flip this over, trim off the pieces that are hanging over and I'll save those for future die cuts because those are big enough for die cutting all sorts of little things. So adhere that into place and then I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to adhere the body and then I'm going to adhere a bunch of my die cuts and the sentiment. And it was at this point that I realized I still had a pile of die cuts because I was like, oh, you know, three cards, not bad. And then, yeah, I had a ton. So off camera, I made a couple more cards that I will show at the very end because like I said, I had so many die cuts. This was so much fun. So adhered everything into place. And then to finish all these cards off, I adhered a bunch of Studio Caudia, I think they're iridescent snow. Yes, iridescent snow crystals. Just to, you know, bring out the bling. Adhered them to the flower centers and around everything. So we've got like bling and pearlescent vellum and splatter and all the things that I love. So there's the butterfly shaped card. So that one will go in a five by seven envelope. This one is the five by seven card with the masking and then the butterfly just adhered right to the card base. And same thing, added some crystals, all that fun stuff. Kept all the insides just simple. And then my A2 card that I just showed me making also added all those crystals just to give it all the bling. And then um, for the final two cards, those are four bar roughly size cards. I think they're about three and a half. Yeah, three and a half by five and a half. Yes, three and a half by five and a half. And all I did was take the big main butterfly, die cut it, cut it in half, die cut the body, cut that in half, and then adhered them to each card base. So I've got the butterfly wings and the body, and then all my little die cuts and everything stamped a sentiment on the inside added die cut sentiments to the front and I got two more cards and I really like the like four bar slash mini slim line. I don't even know at the moment, again, brain is mush, what category these ones would fit under, but I'm, I know I'll have envelopes in my stash. It'll work. So that was all my cards using that fabulous butterfly card creator wafer die set. Like I said, I will have uh, links below the video. I'll link to my blog post. I'll have picture links in my blog post. I'll link to all the supplies I use to the entire collection. You guys can check it out if you're interested. All that info will be below the video. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.